Today's apologists claim, the second law of thermodynamics disproves evolution. Despite being corrected many decades ago, a surprising number of creationists still claim that the second law of thermodynamics makes evolution impossible. The law basically states that the entropy of an isolated system can never decrease, and entropy can be described as the increase of disorganization within a system. Creationists have argued that evolution violates the second law of thermodynamics because evolution requires species to become more organized over time rather than disorganized. That claim is easy to refute because those creationists skip over the word isolated in the definition of the second law. An isolated system is one where there is no energy coming into the system, but the Earth is not an isolated system. It has abundant energy flooding onto the planet every day in the form of sunlight. Here is an easy to understand demonstration for how the creationist claim is clearly false. When a human egg is fertilized, it's just a single cell. If that cell existed in an isolated system, without any incoming energy, it would quickly deplete its stored energy and die. But that egg actually exists in an open system that provides incoming energy from the mother. That allows the single cell to multiply and grow into a baby that's born with some 26 billion cells. The mother herself lives in an open system by consuming external living organisms. Any animals she consumes ultimately depend on plants for their energy, and the plants both she and the animals consume depend on the sun for their energy. Thus, if the second law of thermodynamics prevented an increase in organization, life itself could never exist. It's the isolated system part of the law that makes life possible at all. The same is true for evolution, which also functions within the constraints of Earth's open system. We observe that all offspring possess dozens of mutations that aren't found in their parents. Most of these mutations are neutral and have no effect on the organism, but a few are harmful and fewer still are beneficial. The harmful ones tend to die out, while the beneficial ones tend to spread throughout the population by improving the chances of successful reproduction. That's the basics of how evolution works. Each step is just part of the basic processes of life. And life itself is possible because the Earth is an open system powered by the sun. Amusingly, the same creationists who insist that evolution violates the second law of thermodynamics almost never know what the first law of thermodynamics states, which is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Well, if energy cannot be created or destroyed, then the god creationists believe in couldn't have created the matter and energy in our universe, right? Oh, but then that would contradict their claim that god created everything out of nothing! Okay, so we can dismiss the first law of thermodynamics because it's obviously wrong, but we can accept the second law of thermodynamics, except the part about isolated systems, because it proves evolution wrong. Welcome to the buffet science of creationism, where you get to pick and choose which parts of science you want to accept, and just dismiss the inconvenient parts using special pleading and other fallacies. Yet another reminder that creationism isn't science.